Good morning and welcome to worship online at Mount Tam United Methodist Church in Mill Valley. I'm Kim Smith, the pastor, and we're grateful to God that all of us can gather in this way online. Um, this will be one of our last two last online only services on April 25th. We begin in-person services in our sanctuary with uh, limited numbers because of COVID guidelines, but plenty of space for everyone in our beautiful large sanctuary. Um, and we'll also always live stream those services. But today, here we are online together, the first Sunday after a glorious Easter, and we begin with prayer and song, but always we begin with lighting our Paschal candle, our Christ candle, because though the pandemic seems to be waning as we become vaccinated, and the pastor has the challenge of lighting, we light a candle of remembrance of all of those around the world who have died from the COVID virus. Let us take a moment of prayer and then center ourselves as one with the prayer in our order of service. God, you are the source of our life. Gather us now together, we pray, in this place and in our homes and around the world you love. Form us into a holy community of your own people, molding us by the breath of your Holy Spirit and revealing in this community of faith the face and hands and love of your anointed Christ. Amen. I invite you at home to stand and sing. things I'm looking forward to most in coming back in person is our children's time. And we're going to figure out ways to do that safely and still have all the fun we did and get the message and love of God across. And this will be the final online one, which I think is kind of fun for all of us. So probably everyone recognizes this. Even though we're a family of all adult people, we still do Easter baskets. And uh, I live with people who love to do Easter baskets. And this was my Easter basket last week. And this was one of the things I got. Like so many of you, it's a chocolate bunny. And I've yet to eat it. I'm going to save it for a special occasion. Because the lesson is that Easter is just not a day that has to do with chocolate and bunnies and eggs, though it's a very fun part. I think it's great. Easter is a season. And Easter goes until the end of May. So if we were wise, we'd save our candy to last till the end of May. Yeah, can't do that, probably. But it's good to remember that Easter is more than the egg hunts or family gathering or even worship on Sunday last week, which was extraordinary. It's a season in which we learn to follow the Christ who lives among us, even here, even now, the resurrected one. So when you eat that remaining Easter candy, that's okay, because it's Easter season till the middle of May. 
Thanks for this time with our children. Let us sing Ron Klusmeyer's beautiful hymn, Praise to the Lord. Traditionally, the Sunday after Easter holds one of two lectionary readings. We often hear uh, from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, or from the Gospel of John, a familiar story from the 20th chapter immediately after the resurrection, which we call traditionally the story of doubting Thomas. However, I'm going to read and then I'm going to share the message and I hope by the end of that time you will do away with that phrase, Doubting Thomas, and join me in celebrating Thomas's witness and ministry. But let's first hear the story from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. It was still the first day of the week, meaning the day that the women discovered the empty tomb. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And when he did this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw them, they were filled with joy. And again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I am sending you. And then Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Now Thomas, who was one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples at when Jesus came. And after Thomas returned, the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, Well, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now after eight days, the disciples were again in the house, and this time Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he turned to Thomas and said, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand to my side. No more disbelief, believe. And Thomas responded, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miracle signs in his disciples' presence, signs that are not recorded on this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that in believing you may have life in his name. Amen. What was it that Thomas wanted? I have never been a fan of the Doubting Thomas assessment because I don't think that Thomas asked for anything that any other disciple hadn't already received. After all, they're in a closed-up room, they're afraid of the authorities, 
they don't trust or believe the witness of the women because, well, men then didn't trust or believe the witness of women. And besides, it was kind of a fishy tale, wasn't it, this uh, resurrection thing? I mean, you can imagine thinking so. Any reasonable person would have some doubt, would want a shred of evidence supporting this miraculous claim. I would propose to you that Thomas is just being sensible here. And if you look at a character study of Thomas, who is very active throughout, especially John's gospel, it's not normal for Thomas to be this way. Some of us will remember in the 11th chapter of John where Jesus resuscitates Lazarus and brings him back from the dead. And in that case, it's Thomas who's ready to jump into action with Jesus. Let's go so we can die with you, Jesus. There, you know, Thomas is impulsive and emotional. And yet in the beautiful 14th chapter of John, when Jesus talks about preparing a place for his followers, and we talked about that place last week on Easter Sunday, of God's home having many rooms, there's the faithful, let's make sure we got it right, Thomas. And he says, Lord, we're not sure where you're going. How can we know the way? This is practical, Thomas, Jesus' go-to guy, making sure they'll be able to follow through on their loyalty and the master plan of the master. So we have Thomas who's loyal, Thomas who's emotional and ready to jump in. Does this sound like a doubting Thomas? But I figured that this first post-resurrection story of Jesus probably doesn't come as a surprise, particularly in John's gospel. Because I think that Thomas is asking the right questions. He's still trying to figure out if they're following the plan. I think that doubting Thomas is just more than a bum rap to this guy. I think it's actually a misdirection. Because we come back to the question, what did Thomas want? Put yourself in his shoes. What would you want? He merely wants what the other disciples have already received. He wants evidence. What does he want? What do I think he wants? Thomas desired to receive what he had always sought, to understand Jesus, to be close to Jesus, to follow him faithfully, to try to figure out how to make it happen. He wants what Jesus has to offer. He wants the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus offers that to them as the resurrected Lord in a new way. Three times he says it, twice to the disciples without Thomas and again when Thomas is present. And what are those words? Peace be with you. It's clear that Thomas doesn't have this peace. He doesn't have the peace that Jesus promised. How could he? They're closed up in those rooms for good reasons. Their Lord, their master, their teacher, the man they have followed has died a horrendous, shameful, dangerous death. He's left his followers in a disarray. There's no direction for the future. What hope did Thomas have to be faithful with Jesus gone? Thomas is not at peace with what happened. And I have to ask ourselves, would B be at peace too if the one we had loved had died? and was missing, and had talked about resurrection, but we have no way of conceptualizing that. That's way beyond what we can imagine. I mean, lots of words have been used to describe Thomas's or Jesus' followers after his death. Here comes from some of the Gospels. Disbelieving, afraid, locked away, alarmed, terrorized, amazed, terrified. Does that sound like peace to you? doesn't sound like peace to me. So what was it that Thomas wanted? He had what Jesus had to offer, a way, a truth, a life, peace. Now, there's so many ways to understand this gift of peace. And one of the things that Jesus does is a resurrected Lord, is gifts wraps it and brings it back for his confused, alarmed, terrorized, amazed, followers. And it's not the kind of peace that we often define it as. 
It's not the peace of immediate inner oneness with God. It's not a life filled with just ease and comfort with no difficult landscapes or disengagement. It's not a perfection that can be gifted or attained. The peace that Jesus offers the scared and frightened disciples trying to follow him faithfully, trying to find the way, be they in that upper room or be they online right now in our church and in our sanctuary, how do we find the way, Lord? It comes as a gift and an experience of the complex, the complex relationships of living with a living God as revealed in Jesus. What peace Jesus offers doesn't come outside of our daily lives. It comes in this place, the resurrection place to which we have been called home. Here's a look at some of the peace that Jesus brings. Think about two of these characters. We'll get back to Thomas. For a minute, I want to talk about Peter. Peter, who is the rock on which the church is founded, who rocked the boat, questioned Jesus' decisions, didn't buy into the total program. He lost his temper in so many ways. He betrayed Jesus. He didn't seem to get it. He adored Jesus. He denied him. He betrayed him. Do you think Jesus or a Peter was at peace? In the story in John, as it continues, what does peace look like for Peter? When Jesus says to him, Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. For Peter, peace comes with doing ministry, with taking his doubts and fears and questions and channeling them into the energy to preach, teach, and heal. Peace will come at the end of the day when he is exhausted from the work and exhausted from the questions and exhausted from the voices still within seeking forgiveness, and he hears the first thing Jesus said, which is, follow me. And when he says, I'm trying, Lord, Jesus will say peace. He finds peace in engaging in real ministry in real life. It's somewhat the same for Thomas, loyal and baffled, who seeks the meaning of resurrection with the same faithfulness and practicality as he sought, sought to follow the living Jesus. Thomas, whose awkward outbursts echo the concerns and doubts of the other disciples, who's just heart-filled enough and hearty enough to withstand any potential embarrassment. Thomas will find peace when he learns to live with the bafflement and the paradoxes. He finds peace when Jesus brings him peace. Put your fingers here. See my hands. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas's peace begins with the proclamation, my Lord and my God. And he lets himself, in the words of Old Testament scholar and poet Walter Brueggemann, he lets himself be Eastered. Be Eastered. Here's the poem. Brueggemann writes, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We are baffled by the very Easter claim we voice. Your new life fits none of our categories. We wonder and stew and argue and add clarifying adjectives like spiritual resurrection or physical resurrection, but we remain baffled, seeking clarity and explanation. We who are prosperous and full and safe and tenured, we are baffled and we want explanations. Lord, deliver us from our bafflement and from our many explanations. Push us over into stunned need and show, us to, show to us lively Easter in us, honestly. Easter in us with awesome. Easter in us with joy. And let us be Eastered. Peace here is to let ourselves be Easter. It may look like the peace that Peter struggles and finds in doing ministry or in Thomas of proclamation and faithful following. 
Sometimes peace doesn't always end the bafflement or the stunning or the fear of the questions. It walks alongside them and allows us to live into them fully. The fact that the peace of Jesus can walk alongside us, even in our best and our worst, means that that peace will look like something very different from you and from me and from others. What does that peace look like for you? What was it that Thomas wanted? What is it that you want? Something new is going on here. We are being Eastered. What Thomas wanted was to keep being Eastered, to follow, not in perfection, but in engagement. Not in a conflict-free, perfect life, but in a knowing a God who always walks with us. Not in a locked upper room, but in the danger of promise and possibility whether it's engagement in the bread line or engagement in the heart line. That is the peace he brings. That is the peace Jesus asks us to be. So be Eastered, and peace be with you. Amen. Now we come to the time of sharing our offering. So many of us have utilized the, the gifts of online giving this past year, and we encourage you to continue to give through the church webpage. Send in your check, however that is. And this offering continues to reflect God's generosity to us. Also, please send your prayers in to the Facebook comment section. We will continue to do it that way when we're back in person and online. Even the people sitting in the sanctuary will be putting their prayers into the comment section. So that's one way we'll be united with each other. So put those prayers in, bring that offering on, and let us give thanks to God for the joy we have as Lynn sings. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, because he can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives how sweet to Uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and then one 
gift we have in the people who bring music to us. Let us give thanks for musicians as we pray and continue to send your prayers in to the Facebook comment section. And we'll begin with thanksgiving for music. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the family of the Reverend James Schlager, a good friend of mine who lost a battle with cancer this last week, who was beloved of many people as a district superintendent, as a pastor, as a worker of justice. For her husband, the Reverend Dave Schlager, and their family, let us pray for peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for our sister Melissa, who is still working on health concerns. For her peace and recovering and discovery, let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the soul and family of our brother, Robert Washington, who recently reconnected with our church, who lost his battle with cancer this last week. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for healing and for joy for our sister, Lisa, who is undergoing cornea surgery on April 20th. Let us pray for her. Lord, Hear our prayers. Patricia raises prayers for those seeking healing in family relationships. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Elaine raises prayers for peace for each of us and thanks God for the message of Easter. Lord, hear our prayers. Sue raises prayers for the refugees and immigrants at the border. May God's justice be done. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray in continued prayer for Black Lives Matter to say her name, Breonna Taylor, and to pray the names of all those. Lord, hear our prayers. Mary Michael lifts up prayers of peace for David who passed away this last Monday, after a five-year battle with cancer, for his son David and wife Jessica, let us pray for these of God's beloved. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers for Beth and family, for John M. and family, for Richard M., and for Moraine, let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for those who are infected with the COVID virus, for those who are struggling in recovery, and for those who are the long haulers who are really struggling to find uh, equilibrium in life, let us pray for their recovery and their peace. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray for all of those who are impacted with COVID, by the COVID-19 virus and the pandemic, for all of us, as we know the hope on the horizon comes closer, but we still must be vigilant. And for nurses, doctors, medical professionals, first responders, for all of those who have made our life possible, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Continue to pray for our sister Gail and for all of those who are living their lives to the fullest. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. I invite you to continue to send in your prayers through Facebook. Our prayer team and our pastoral staff pray throughout the week with them and for them. And now let us bring all these prayers together with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father and Mother, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We share the passing of the peace in our homes. If there's others with you, turn to them and say, peace be with you, or put that in the comments section, text it to somebody. And if you're with yourself, say it to yourself and say that around. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And now let us pray our prayer of dedicating ourselves and our congregation. Please join me. Spirit of life, in whom we live and move and have our being, we lift our alleluias in thanksgiving to you. Thank you for your presence among us, for uniting us as one. Fill us with your power that by truthful words, just actions, and shared life, we may witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand to sing. I love that song, and I love the way Lynn sings it. I have my mask on to show you that we don't have to do this when we worship together. 
I won't have to do it. I'm fully vaccinated, and so I'm looking forward to April 29th to be with you. We will all be wearing masks inside, however, vaccinated or not. We'll have good ventilation. We have our pews laid out, so we're safely in family groups. We are coming back to worship on April 25th. And I mentioned that because what I did forget at the start of this service is to thank everyone who makes this service possible. Sue, who does the altars, our music director, Hung Jung Lin, who sang, and the production crew right now, Liz Rose and Jeff. And without them, this would not have happened. And so um, I wish you could all stand up and they could hear your applause. And I know that they know you appreciate them. And when we come back in person, it almost doubles the job of doing both the house sound and video and the online. So it's a complicated, wonderful thing. And it will unite us together as a congregation as we all become more and more comfortable with being inside in safe ways. So that's April 25th. Next week, I'm looking forward to being with you. And we have a wonderful guest preacher. Our lay leader, Joanna Beck, will be sharing the message and our last online-only service. So thank you to everyone who has made this possible throughout this past year. I can't say enough about people. And I have to admit that there's one thing. I'm glad there's only one more adaptation to make <laughs> for worship. I'll be glad when everyone's back in together. So let us now go forth in the love of God and allow that God love to Easter you. Be Eastered. There is the justice love of God, which does continue to confront and challenge us. That, that is being Eastered. Always, however, never forget the merciful love of God, which brings you comfort. That is being Eastered. And let us carry that love to each person that we meet. In the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, let us go forth in peace. Be Eastered. Amen. Thank you.